This is the point he's making. We need to allot coal immediately. We can't wait for the legislation yes. to come up because we have to have more power plants. We need more energy. You know the short supply of coal in the years to come, if we do not have these coal plants function, would be at 150 to 180 million tons. Yeah. And if you look at the import price of coal, your energy costs for the consumer will go up from X number of units to X plus 5 so, or X plus 10. So and you will not be able to supply energy so, to the poor so, people of so India. Mr. Sibal, if the argument of the Prime Minister is on GDP, how is the GDP benefited since most of these companies haven't started mining coal out of the 57? 57, 57 I told you it takes 54 months. 56 Again, you are, are not operational. You are repeating the question. I gave you the answer. You're repeating the question. It takes 54 months for anybody to even start mining. And the latest allocations were made way back in November. That is beginning of 2007, November 2006. And their clearances have to be taken. Unless the clearances are taken, you can't uh, uh, take even the first step in mining. So all those issues will have to be investigated. The point is nobody can say today, and they did it to Chidambaram. I'm sorry to say they did it to him last year. They decided he was guilty. And they said we will not participate, allow him to participate in the House. Ultimately, the Supreme Court said there's no evidence against him. And I had been saying and defending him all along that there's absolutely no evidence. Now, is there any accountability of the opposition to Parliament for not allowing a senior minister to participate in the proceedings of the House because they feel that he is guilty? The screening committee, Mr. Sibyl, it's headed by the coal secretary. Yes, you are right. The states are represented. But on the question of responsibility, is the coal ministry that is responsible? What were but the checks and all, balances? Let's find out what, what went wrong? What were the checks and balances? Because yes. the CAG says, and I, let's look at the facts. And the CAG says there was nothing on record in the said meeting meetings of any other documents or any comparative evaluation of the applicants for a coal block, which was relied upon by the screening committee. Now, Mr. Sibyl, look, Mr. Sibyl, a, a comparative evaluation is a must, isn't it? You know, who says there was no comparative evaluation? The CAG says it. And if the CAG is right, the government will have to answer for it. What were the systems put in place for the evaluation? What are the parameters the government will have to explain on the floor of the House? You don't allow the government to put these facts on the floor of the House. How do you want answers from me on television? This is exactly what governments will have to explain. What was in the past? What better procedures were put in place by the UPA government? Were those procedures followed meticulously? Whether it, was there any favoritism or not? If there is any such evidence, uh, that should be investigated. But to say, uh, you know, with one sweeping, uh, 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 you know, statement that X is guilty, we will, we will, we will uh, not have a debate in the House. We will not even hear his statement. This is just completely undemocratic. I have never seen this. After all, those leaders of the BJP who are now in the opposition should learn from how Bajpai conducted himself when he was leader of the opposition. If they were to just follow his footsteps, I am afraid that we would not have this kind of environment today. M M Mr. Sibyl, you saw today's news conference. If you see today's news conference, you see almost the entire BJP leadership try and come out and have a joint press conference. Now, they also mention one critical point, and this point needs to be explained. You keep saying, and I see in today's Prime Minister's note, he says that, you know, you say we are not doing things speedily enough. I would agree that in a world where things can be done by fiat, we could have done it faster. But given the complexities of the process of consensus building in our parliamentary system, this is e easier said than done. My last question is divided to you in two parts. First, I want to go back to 2005. Mr. Sibyl, if the government was convinced that it was doing the right thing, why did it give in so meekly to what four BJP state governments were saying? Is there correspondence no, from the government side rebutting, contradicting and taking on, as you have done on several other issues, the state governments of the BJP? Why would you give in so simply because just because Vasundra Rajay or some bureaucrat in Chhattisgarh wrote a letter no, to the no, Prime no, no, Minister? No, 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 I'm sorry. It's not, it's not a question of giving in at all. It's not a question. You should know how events were evolving. What happened in 2005 was not any decision by this government to adopt a particular route. The government was still trying to find out exactly which way to go. Should we amend the Coal Mine Nationalization Act, which the BJP tried to do in the year 2000? Or should we amend the MMRD Act? At one point in time, the law ministry, and I think it was sometimes in July 
uh, of a particular year, uh, they suggested, well, even if you were not to amend the Act and you were to allot these blocks, then the law of contract will prevail. But within one month of that, they changed their position. Yes, and they said, you are right. no, 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 what is required is amendment of the MMRD Act. So the MMR, then that, 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 those proceedings started. When that started, the, the states were brought on board. Then consultations took place with the state. Then a legislation was prepared. In November, I think, of 2010, if I am not mistaken, the legislation was ready. Therefore, it was, it, was to be introduced, it was to be introduced in Parliament in the budget session. The budget session of 2011 got postponed sine no. So it could not be done in that, no, in, but that's, in that session. That's too but it was brought in October, it was brought in October 2010. And then all this, uh, all this was done. No, 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 no. Uh, it's was like, in 2010. No, no. You see, and on, then in, 2012 happened. in February 2008, which takes me this this chronology you've given out takes me to my last question, which is about the urgency. That was there any urgency even after the bill was passed? You are right on the figures broadly, but actually the mines minister no, no moved. Allocations. The One mines, second. the mines no minister allocations moved. They have been made. The, no, no, the mines minister moved... No, allocations have been made after two, uh, February 2012. No, but tell me, Mr. Sibyl, the mines minister moved a motion for the passage of the MMRDA in the budget session. This happened on, in February, yes. mid-February 2010. You are right. My question to you is, what took the government so long to notify the rules on auction only in 2012 when the act was passed in you, 2010? You, two years. Arnab Goswami, I, Ar Arnab Goswami, if you were to sit with me, and that on, on those rules, I will tell you uh, a thousand points on which I am very worried because I've gone through very carefully through the rules. How are you going to allot this? Because if the power plant is located at X place and, and the coal mine is located at Y place, how are you going to make these allotments? And there are different power plants located in different places. How will you calculate all these things? And then there are other very, very complex issues. If you, with respect to the steel mine, there are other issues. And in, in respect of steel, there is no reserve price. There is only a, 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 a floor price. There, and in, fact, in respect of power plants, there is competitive bidding on tariff. Yes. Now, if you have an auction on the coal and you have competitive bidding of tariff, and ultimately that, that cost of coal is passed on to the, to, 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 uh, to, to the state electricity board, the state electricity board won't be able to sell that power to the ordinary citizens because citizens cannot afford it. So these are very complex issues. I think we are moving into very sensitive territory which impacts the future of this country. We have destroyed the telecom market, now we are going to destroy the power sector very soon and we are going to destroy the steel sector only because a political party wants some capital before the Gujarat election and before the Himachal election. Why do you say so? What is the so political exactly capital? the point. Why don't they want a debate? Allow us to explain all this, make your points. Let the people of this country judge. They say what difference will it make? No, they say ransom. what difference will, will a debate make? You can't this country to ransom? The, they, say what, they say what difference will a debate make? Why will it not make a difference? You will expose. If you are in the right, you will expose this government. If, After all, democracy is all about exposing. B Mr. And ultimately Sibyl. going to the polls and saying, we told you so. M Mr. Sibyl. This is not a quick fix. Parliamentary democracy is not a quick, quick fix for opposition parties to come to power because they will not, not allow parliament to function. Mr. Sibyl, the demand for the cancellation of the blocks, which is seen to be largely an escalation of the demands after the demand for the Prime Minister's yeah. resignation. Would oh, you... I, I don't would, want to... Would you consider... Yes. Would you consider a discussion? <laughs> a discussion on that subject? Look... What, Look, quite frankly, Kutwani Arnab, I am not prepared to answer any of this. Cancellation of the blocks, do this, do that. Let's have a debate. Let the facts emerge. If the facts suggest that it's required to have an investigation of a particular issue, let that investigation take place. There can't be any preconditions to a debate. Why? That you first take a decision, then you have a debate. Then why have a debate? I, I, you take I, on the decision. I actually, I actually think that, that debates are wonderful yeah. and I know Mr. Sibyl that you know if you and Mr. Jaitley were to come on a debate then it would be a great debate we could go point by point so what is not being done in parliament we could do on national television it's my last since uh, it's unfortunate it, it, well my last question to you is and this is more as a quip uh, on the zero loss theory Mr. Jaitley took a dig at Mr. Chidambaram he said that day that <laughs> what Mr. Chidambaram <laughs> is saying means that if somebody takes money out of Mr. Chidambaram's bank account 
puts it in his own account, uh, but does not encash it, will it be assumed that Mr. Chidambaram has not suffered a loss? Well, quite frankly, you want me to answer that question, I'll answer it like the following, in the following way. This is a highly complex economic issue, both in respect of steel, cement and power. You want to reduce this issue to a childish college debate, which Jaitley tries to do. All I can say is, I'm sorry for him. Mr. Sibbal, I thank you for taking my questions on the news hour tonight. This is a political crisis that was unexpected. Let's see how long it goes. Thank you very much for joining me on the news hour. Thanks.